I'm here on a beautiful sunny day in front of Cheltenham General Hospital uh, and I'm speaking today to Stephen Thomas. Now Stephen's going to be standing for Reform UK in the Cheltenham Borough Council elections on the 5th of May for College Ward which includes the hospital. So Stephen, can you tell me what the residents in College Ward are mainly concerned about? Hi Chris. Um, so I've spoken to a number of residents over the last couple of weeks, um, certainly towards this end of College Ward where we are, um, the hospital way. A number of, of residents have, have expressed uh, dissatisfaction with, with the state of Sanford Park. So Sanford Park in the sense that uh, a lot of people, especially females, don't feel comfortable walking through the park late at night. They want to see better lighting. Um, there's been lots of crime within Sanford Park, lots of litter, lots of drug taking. I, I run through Sanford Park in the mornings and you know some of the debauchery I see on the ground is, is quite breathtaking to be honest with you. Um, if I go further afield, um, up towards the north of the ward, uh, we've got the same, the same situation for, for Norton Park. Um, a lot of the, the walkways are covered in mud. People can't walk through with their prams. And the Lib Dems have been promising and promising for years that it's going gonna, it's gonna to get resolved. They're going to regenerate the park. And they've done next to nothing. Okay, it's all talk and no action. So what other issues are being brought up on the doorstep? Anything to do with, with uh, traffic and roads? That's the normal complaint. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, living in close proximity to uh, Bath Road, for example, residents who live off the side streets just, just can't park there. Um, there's a two hour um, parking window for people to, to park their car. Often when residents come, pa come back, they can't park outside their own front door. And again, going south of the ward here, when you get closer into the town centre, a, a lot of businesses have been issued with two parking permits for their employees. Okay, so, you know, given the amount of businesses in the town centre, Again, we've got a similar situation where people just can't park outside their own front door. This is a problem. You know, people are having to park two, three, four streets away, and this just isn't good enough. So what about your priorities for, for addressing some of those issues? What would you do on, on uh, appointment as a, or election as a councillor to the Borough Council? Yeah, so, uh, so a number of things really. So to address the, the parking issue, that would be something I'd be looking at as an immediate priority. Why do businesses have to have two permits? Why do they even need one permit? Okay, priority should be for residents. It's as simple as that. You know, it's not acceptable for, for families, people with children to have to, to park two, three streets away. So an urgent reform into the the parking system around here is what is needed. Um, we've got the usual issue of, of um, potholes and waste management. Um, you know, I think the Conservatives have said that there's a hundred million pounds to spend for, for road development. Now, a hundred million pound might sound a lot like a lot of money for the likes of me and you. This is the whole country, presumably. No, this is for Gloucestershire. Oh, for Gloucestershire, for, Gloucestershire. for the county. Yeah, okay. Okay, it sounds like a lot of money, but, um, you know, how much is that in the wider budget? How much budget do they actually have? What percentage of that 100 million, okay, is allocated to roads? Who, who makes a decision about where that money gets spent? Which roads? Which constituencies? So, presumably, you would want that to be much more transparent and for, for people to understand where this money is being spent, to know that it has been spent and for the benefit of the, uh, of the electors. Absolutely, and that is my election manifesto. Um, accountability and transparency. Okay, um, I've just recently had my, 
latest council tax bill gone up another three percent this year okay where is this money being spent okay where okay i, I see 74 percent goes to gloucestershire county council um i think 11 percent to the police force and then the remainder a small balance goes to cheltenham council where does this money actually get spent there's no transparency people want to know where their money is being spent i want to know where their money is being spent do you of course i think i think uh, i think everyone does so what in what are the important issues to you personally for me personally there there, there are a couple of issues um i'm stood in front of cheltenham a and e um, Cheltenham A&E is currently operating on an 8am to 8pm consultancy led uh, basis. Okay, um, There's often a lack of skilled medical professionals to see people when they have emergencies. A lot of people when they have medical emergencies, they come here, they have to wait, and then they get told to, to go to Gloucester or go, go to Bristol. And Gloucester's what, 8, 10 miles away? It, it's about that. Um, and didn't this used to be a 24-hour A and E? It did used to be 24-hour A and E. Um, I'm trying to rack my brains now when that was, but um, so eight till eight is actually a reduction of 50% in the service level. Yep. And as I said to you a, a moment ago, there's often a lack of skilled medical professionals needed to treat people, and they're, as you said, they're having to go to Gloucester, they're having to go to Bristol. That's not good enough. Mm. We need a 24 hour A&E &A here with staffing to ensure that the 90,000 plus residents of Cheltenham are taken care of. You know, I've heard horror stories talking to, to local residents where they've come here, they've waited three, four hours in the back of a van. Okay, and then they're told, oh, you need to go to Gloucester. In the back of an ambulance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, of course, that uh, that additional journey to Gloucester is not only eight miles, but it's probably half an hour through traffic and uncomfortable, especially if you're unwell, which obviously you would be in the back of an ambulance. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so we need 24 hour A&E here, that's for sure. Um, another one of my priorities is a community arts hub. So there used to be a hub in Cheltenham called the Axiom Centre. Um, it used to be a place where people could meet and greet, have a coffee. Um, you know, it's very much in tune with the creative community of Cheltenham. Cheltenham was very much um, a creative arts hub, and I think um, people have a lack of space to go to. You know, in their community. So my proposal is to have a community arts hub where people can meet. They can have a coffee. You know, they, they, they have a, a sense of community. I noticed that there are a huge number of festivals in Cheltenham, apart from the racing festival, obviously. There's a, there are arts festivals, uh, there's music festivals, film festivals, literature festivals and so on. Does that not satisfy the, the requirements of the local population or are you looking for something more specific for local people? Yeah, very much so. Um, specific and permanent. So th these festivals are very much temporary. Um, they create a lot of congestion in the area, um, a lot of litter. People just want a space to hang out. You know, this becomes more important for elderly people that might live by themselves. You know, they can go and connect with like-minded individuals, have a coffee, um, you know, have lunch, you know, exchange of ideas. Well, Stephen Thomas, that's a, a very varied uh, approach to what local government can do for the people of Cheltenham. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you Chris.